Hi, I'm Joe Alden, MD of Survival Top 50's Reader's Choice website, doomandbloom.net, with over a thousand articles, podcasts, and videos on medical preparedness. Together with my wife, Amy Alden, an advanced registered nurse practitioner, we're the authors of the 2017 Book Excellence Award winner in medicine, The Survival Medicine Handbook, now in its 700 page third edition, and the designers of an entire line of medical kits at store.doomandbloom.net. You'll see lots of videos on injuries and hemorrhages, but you won't see many on traumatic amputation, and even these involve just the basics of pre-hospital care like stopping hemorrhage. However, in long-term survival, where you have to make do with what you have, you might be the highest medical asset left and have to take care of that wound from beginning to end. You might even have to perform an amputation on a shattered limb. Way out there, right out of a zombie apocalypse movie, never happened? Well, you know, I'll admit you're probably right, at least I hope you are. But don't be surprised if a major disaster makes you the end of the line when it comes to wound care. It just makes common sense to have a good medical kit and some knowledge of how to deal with medical issues in times of trouble. But today, let's go out on a limb, so to speak, and discuss the issues relating to amputation in austere settings. In rare circumstances, damage to a limb may be so extensive that it cannot be saved. Amputation is the surgical removal of all or part of an extremity, usually performed on arms, legs, hands, feet, fingers, or toes. Off the grid, an amputation is clearly a procedure of last resort. The hard reality is that your patient may very well not survive it. As a matter of fact, at least 25% of American Civil War soldiers undergoing the procedure died due to complications. The closer to the torso the amputation was performed, the higher the death rate. Therefore, unless some society-ending event has occurred, you should never attempt surgical procedures yourself. Seek help by qualified medical professionals wherever and whenever they are available or if evacuation to a modern medical facility is possible. Now, having said that, there are various reasons that an amputation might be necessary. The most common is poor circulation due to damage to blood vessels. Without reasonable blood flow, tissue may not get enough oxygen to remain viable, and life-threatening infection and tissue death may occur. Now, some other reasons that an amputation might be indicated would include extensive injury from trauma, severe burns, cancerous tumors, serious infection that fails to improve with antibiotic, severe frostbite, and gangrene, which is tissue death due to loss of circulation from trauma, or even, say, chronic illness like diabetes. Several methods are used to determine where an amputation should be done and how much to remove. Above all, you need good circulation in the area that you're salvaging. This involves checking where an extremity may lose its pulse, identifying areas where a limb loses normal temperature, spreading areas of tissue death, checking where the extremity no longer has functioning nervous tissue, and identifying areas where a bone has been crushed beyond repair. Basic measures to increase the chances of survival of the procedure include sedating the patient as much as you possibly can, cleaning the damaged areas with betadine or other antiseptics before the procedure, using sterile gloves in a sterile field, removing debris and bits of shattered bone, tying off bleeding blood vessels with suture material, preserving an adequate amount of living skin and soft tissue to cover the exposed end of the bone, and shortening and smoothing the bone enough to decrease irritation to the covering soft tissue. Now, stitching remaining muscle to the bone lining is also done. That bone lining is called the periosteum, but this is difficult without special equipment. Placing a drain before closing to allow blood and inflammatory fluid to exit the surgical site is very important, while allowing room for the drain to be placed is also extremely important. You must change dressings regularly and observe the wound closely for infection over time. Starting a course of antibiotics is imperative as well. Boy, oh boy, it is a procedure that we hope you'll never have to consider. It's important to understand that your patient may not recover from an amputation in the best of circumstances without advanced care. Despite that hard reality, the survival medic should have knowledge and supplies that are useful for many different medical issues off the grid. This is one of them. This is Joe Alden, MD, that old Dr. Bones, wishing you the best of health in good times or bad. Thanks for watching. Hey, make an old man, me, very happy, and your family more medically prepared by subscribing to this channel 
and by checking out Nurse Amy's entire line of medical kits and supplies at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. You'll be glad you did.